Hi, welcome to the Von Liter Podcast. You will watch us drinking one liters of beer whilst talking about shies. Please like and subscribe. Welcome to the Von Liter. Prost. Prost. Sir, this is much classy, much classy uh, than... Van Lito. Oh, it's so good. It's like honey. Why is it so sweet? Uh, peanut butter whiskey. I was going to say so. It's the same one we had at the uh, lounge room mm. podcast. Want to try mine? <laughs> nine. <laughs> nine. Nine. What, nine. <laughs> what was the first thing that you ever purchased on Amazon? Can you remember? Oh, fuck. Let's take it back. Amazon. <laughs> I'll tell you my story with Amazon. Well, not my story, but my opinion of Amazon. Just to be clear, not Brazilian Amazon, the online. Yeah, yeah, the online retailer, uh-huh. the biggest online retailer in the world. Um, I was an eBay guy. I was all about eBay. It used to be like used things and then new things came I was up. a gum tree guy. Wow. Yeah, go on. But eBay turned into more like Amazon, like it, it sold new things, like uh, retailers opened up an eBay store to sell their shit. And then I would always find items on Amazon. I was like, oh, I don't like Amazon. And like had a shitty checkout thing. And it was all American. And I was like, I can't find the proper Australian stuff. But now I got that Amazon app on speed dial. Mm-hmm. Like that shit's bam. But it doesn't tell you history that far back. So I would really have to remember. What's the first thing you bought? That sucks, man. I wonder how... Um, I wonder... I wonder if Amazon have their own dedicated planes or they get transported by like a Qantas plane or something weird. Well, they have warehouses everywhere. That's the thing. That's true, yeah. So like if you want to sell shit on Amazon. You can sell shit on Amazon. Yeah, that's what I mean. But like I think you would store your product. You pay Amazon. You store your products in an Amazon warehouse. Like e-commerce. Yeah. yeah. And then they just ship it out to you. I saw a video recently of this girl. It was on TikTok. I just got TikTok again. I was like, oh, let's have a look, see how TikTok's changed. It hasn't. I saw this video of this girl. You know girl, what's changed about TikTok? The, we'll chat about that. The landscape? No. I'm talking about the USA. Continue. Oh, haven't uh, aren't, aren't America trying to ban it and shit? Have they banned it? So they've signed a legislation where they're basically trying to force TikTok to sell. I don't know if it's just like the the... American side, sell it to an American company or they'll ban it. Yeah. So they can have the control. Yeah. And that China's not brainwashing their children. Oh, and it, or stealing all this vital information. Yeah. yeah. So this girl was, this. it was like a YouTube short and this girl had bought something. It's kind of like Steam when you can buy cheap games that, that mm. like low, low, low level developers make that sometimes become popular. And then they get more funding and then eventually they'll sell it to consoles. She bought like a low level product that no one knows about. And I can't remember what the product was. It was like something like a instant heater or something like that. And she was on TikTok and she's like, I've got this new device. It's awesome. And the video had like 5 million views. And this dude on YouTube was like, yo, if you had registered to, to, like be sponsored by Amazon and sponsor the product. It was like a simple click on the Amazon page. Then you could have been paid for sponsorship for mm. like, if, yeah, you can have affiliate links. Yeah. So she had 5 million views on this product and she could have got like, I think it was like $250,000 worth of money for like, just for a sponsor deal. It was crazy. Um, Jack, Jackie has my sister, Jackie. Jack, Jack, Jackie. Jack, Jack, Jackie. She's got like affiliate links for like, her yoga stuff. So it'll be like genius Jack Jack. You want to buy my yoga mat? Fuck yeah. Affiliate link. <laughs> affiliate link. <laughs> affiliate, affiliate, affiliate. We should, our next song. <laughs> affiliate link. Affiliate link. Don't stink <laughs> up my room. I got a broom. I'm going to sweep your bitch ass out of the door. I think the first thing I ever purchased on Amazonian was um, like a hair shaver. Oh, that, the shaver that, yeah. um, Post shaver shaver, yeah. 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 I think it was a piece of dog shit. 50, 60 bucks and it shed itself. Oh, that, that was the shit one? Or no, you it was got... good. It was like a pro one. It was like the, the toppest model of um, Remington at the time, but yeah. The foil shaver. Has yeah. it shed itself? That's a shame. 
Yeah, look, I don't know if something got in it. Like I cleaned it thoroughly, but maybe I used too much of the oil. I'm just making a suggestion. I don't know if it's true or not, but um, so. Mine would have been so long ago because that's not too long ago, is it? Mm. Your one? My first purchase would have been so, so long ago. I mm. can't even remember. Yeah, true. Yeah, this was. Um, I buy way too much on Amazon. Maybe July last year. I think I did. So I'm very new to the Amazon game, but next day shipping, will love oh, it. Oh man, next day same day delivery if you find the right thing yeah, and yeah. you order it in the morning. And it's like it'll come here by before nine p.m. and it's like some dude's gonna drop it off at like eight o'clock and they'll do it. They're basically like Uber drivers, but for but, Amazon, but better. Yeah. yeah, but better. And don't expect tips. Yeah, no, I'm joking. But Those they... Uber drivers are the backbone of this society. <laughs> yeah, it's pouring outside. I think I might get a minority to dri- <laughs> to deliver me food. <laughs> Um, Shit. what um let's say you could create your own video game mm-hmm. what type first of all let me we'll go bullet points you answer i'll question you answer and then we can look at the picture at the end so if you had a video game what type of game would it be would it be like a portal style game a first person shooter game a driving game no open world 100 percent first person style. like okay so third person rpg uh Open Maybe world. I'd even give people the option to switch. Mm. Camera angles. Good. And what would you call You can the... play first person in GTA, but it's just dog shit compared yeah, it's to gross. proper yep. FPS. What would the premise of the game be? Would it be set on Earth? Yeah. Nah, yeah. I would be, I'd be doing like a, a realism. I'm just going to copy GTA. Mm-hmm. because. So it'd be about... Freedom to steal cars and bash people and all this shit. Yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe I'll come up with a different storyline that's not so criminal, but mm. it'll be it'll be set on Earth. I'm not a I'm not a fantasy guy. I'm not making a fantasy game. Mm-hmm. It'll be bulk stock standard. Edit your own character, all that stuff. Yeah. What would just the, like GTA Online kind of? What would the main mission of the of the game to be to get all the money and be happy in the end, or to destroy an evil tyrant, or maybe yeah. Uh, yeah, so maybe it'll have like a proper movie style plot, not necessarily like the the drug dealing kind of thing. Yeah, but what what else is exciting to people, you know? Exactly. What else do you want to play? You want to play things that you don't do in real life mm. so that you can practice doing it so then you can execute it in real life later on. Yeah. So like you, you steal a lot of cars in GTA, eventually after a while you'll know how to steal a car in real life. Then you can go out, it's like, steal the cars in real life. Then the next part of GTA, you then learn how to sell the car to an illegal car dealer. Or Facebook Marketplace, whichever. Or, yeah. Change the plates. Uh, either or, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you get your cousin in the prison to, to make some new plates for you and you send it over. Exactly. Classic. Everyone's got a cousin in prison, right? Oh, yeah. Do you? No. Oh. Do you? Mm-mm. Um... That's awesome, dude. I think, um, what would you call it? Just come on, off the top of your head. <laughs> Round blister mic. Yeah, blister mic, but no, it would be. <laughs> yeah, blister mic, yeah. Of course. Um, Filtered reality. Yeah, it would have to be. Um, see, I, I feel like I'd want to do, I say I'm not fantasy, but maybe I'd want to do like some some weird shit in there, like maybe some physics stuff. I love games with like sick physics. So like when Crisis came out, had some sick physics. I don't know if you ever played Crisis where you got the nano suit. Yeah, the it's Crisis like, war suit, yeah. Yeah, and it's like maximum speed, yeah. maximum armor. Yeah. That was sick and you could go invisible and sneak around and shit. That was a sick game and it had mad physics. So like all the the buildings which were really just like wood frames with like tin things cuz it's all meant to be like military bases kind of thing. But they were all like destroyable, so you could run a vehicle into them and the I love panels destroyable were... buildings, bro. It's so good. Physics, dude. Yeah. So so good. The old battlefield games, like before Battlefield 3, like Bad Company 2 and shit, you could set C4 up on the four corners of a building. Whole Fucking building comes down. 9-11, that shit. Change that landscape. Do you know what I think would be sick? If if I may add on to your idea, imagine if a meteor comes down and lands in your character's backyard. Bro. And um, there's like a new compound or a mineral from outer space that your guy's like, oh, Space Rock picks it up and it changes his physiology. So he has That'd some kind sick. of like alien, maybe like nanos type of thing. So 
your whole thing is to like live your life open world, but avoid detection from CIA and and like Area 51 who are like trying to track down this person who's yeah. had who's who's been in connection, who's been in contact with an uh, artificial uh, sorry uh, 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 ET. Fuck. That would be that would be dope. The only thing in practice, I could see that being not as fun. I don't enjoy when I'm like wanted in GTA, for instance. Yeah. Or GTA is too extreme. Have, you, you haven't played any Red Dead, have you? I played the zombie one. Red, Red Dead. Dead Red Redemption, Dead Redemption. I mean. The, yeah, Red Dead Redemption. It was a zombie one from the first one. It was like a zombie version of the game. Oh, was there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, Red Dead. I think I would have liked it if I had the time and I had like maybe a PS5. But I it's just slow. I yeah, no, but I like it. Red Dead like, Redemption. I'm playing. 2. I'm playing Fallout Four right now, and I'm just like taking it slow, going around, taking on every mission, blowing heads off super mutants. It's dope. So good. So, you ever play Fallout? Nah, bro. You would love super it. Mutants. No, bro. It's not my jam. No, I'd super rather mutants. ride around a horse and dude shoot deer. Fallout. Fallout is. Is and you can change the angles. Fallout is GTA. Same thing for GTA, but it's just a bit more cool because you're in like a radioactive wasteland, dude. And it's just like you're taking on missions. You edit your your shit. You can buy a home, edit that, and like, like, dude, it's everyone. Everyone listening who who would would ha- has the stomach to comment, comment how good Fallout is for Phil, and let's convince him to play it. <laughs> I probably just have to ask my brother and friends, brother and co. Yeah, Dave would be all over it. Dave would be like, you fucking moron, idiot, idiot, splat it, flag it, idiot, play it. So, but Red Dead Redemption, yeah. what I was saying is that shit has, like, it's slow, but it's just so fucking real. And, and you, you just said blowing heads off things in Fallout. Oh, I've it's watched gruesome. Red Dead, dude. dude I've watched it's feeding people to crocodiles lassoing someone and then standing on a train while they get dragged along, fucking blowing heads off and legs off. I've seen it, dude. I, so know, I know what's good. In that, it's not as extreme in GTA. You know in GTA you have stars and then you're wanted and then when your stars are gone, you're not wanted. In Red Dead, because it's like old school, the you're wanted in a certain area. So the cops in that area know your face and if you go into that area and someone sees you or the wrong person sees you, then you're wanted. Or if you commit a crime and there's witnesses, you'll like kill someone and it'll be like witness. And then you'll see the witnesses on your mini map. And you can and kill you can, them. Yeah, you can yeah. hunt them down, kill the witnesses. But if they alert the authorities, you're then you're wanted in that area and you're wanted in that area for good. You either have to pay them off. You have to go to like a or thing. kill them, destroy the whole town. Pay them off. Well, you can't. You get marshals after you if you did that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. If that's same thing would would happen, not not necessarily the same, but in Fallout, if you wiped out a whole town or you pissed some people off in a town, you'd go to a town ne- next door and they go, hey, you're the guy who shot up Softy Springs. I wouldn't go over there. I Someone's love, looking for I you. I love like NPC. Conse- consequential. Yeah, consequential references in games. That's what that's what Red Dead's so good at too. So that's why like GTA 6 is going to be fucking dope. Oh, bro. It better be dope. I am I will get a PC for GTA 6 and we can play online together. Oh, man. It's going to be... Go hard. Good. Um, I wanted to... I asked you about the video game because I wanted to dedicate this episode to NPCs. I think um, I think an, M- MP- an NPC is a, is a very funny, something very, very humorous that's become quite hilarious. For those who don't know, which I doubt everyone, all our audience would know, non-play, non-play character is an NPC. And essentially, if you've ever played Grand Theft Auto, everyone who isn't you running around is an NPC. Like they're just really stupid and silly and they have like really dumb conversations. Like you'll be walking on the street and you walk past and you'll go, fuck you, Brian. Um, you didn't buy my tampons for me. I told you I got stuck. A dog stole my homework. Dog, what does dog and homework got to do with tampons? And then, like, that's like a dumb NPC conversation. The problem with that is, mm-hmm. we're just talking about 2013. I'm excited to see 2025 NPCs. Should be interesting. That shit's going to be. Well, here's the funny thing. I, I have a. I that's going to be like Free Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds. I have a very close. F- oh, no. Free Guy. Yeah. Yeah, Reynolds. I have a close friend of mine who um messaged who called me messaged me recently and said he's having a bit of a rough go. And I called him immediately and I said, Hey man, how are you doing? He's like, Oh man, I'm just living an NPC life at the moment. And I thought, 
NPCs are a lot more, a lot more insanely idiotic compared to our normal lives, but it, it can feel like if you think Big about time. it, our life can very much feel like an NPC. You get up, you brush your teeth, you eat some food, you drink a coffee, you go to work, you do the same thing day in, day out. And then you see someone else and you're like, fuck, yeah. that's the main character. And yeah, I'm yeah, the yeah. NPC. Yeah. So, um, Shout out to all those people who feel like an NPC. I, I certainly know I do sometimes. Absolutely. For the most part. But um, I think if I was to create a video game, while you were talking, I was trying to think of something that I, I would like to play. Um, I remember last podcast we had, I told you about a guy who I follow on Instagram. And he basically, he basically does the Night Stalker stuff. Uh, Night Stalker? Crawler? Nightcrawler, no. yeah. Sorry, Nightstalk was a Californian psychopath uh, killer, Ramirez or something like that. But Nightcrawler, basically, he f- he lives in LA and he goes around to the worst places of LA and he listens to police radio and he goes there and arrives on crime scenes and films people getting arrested. Sometimes people shut up in the ambulance, putting a towel over them, like. Jeez. And um, it's all uncensored and like he'll film like hookers getting arrested and. There's an area of LA they call the Blade because it's like a really shitty area. So he'll he'll be like hashtag the Blade. The Blade is fire tonight. Things like that. And the dude's not necessarily a leech. Like he's not like, ex- like he's not antagonizing anyone. He'll just film and silently do it. And some people in will be like, stop fucking filming me, motherfucker. And chicks will be like, fuck you, and try to whip him. He'd be like, hey, leave me alone. And then the cops will intervene. Things like that. But we don't get in trouble. Imagine a game where like you are you are basically run around LA first person and like film that shit. Nightcrawler game. Nightcrawler style. Yeah. Nightcrawler game. But then you discover like a crazy conspiracy with like, like the police mayor, the police chief and like a governor of LA and then like woman was killed. And so then they start chasing you kind of like a pineapple express dope. thing. It'd be sick, dude. And you got to like run and jump over fucking, jump over a fence and a barking Rottweiler's chasing you in someone's backyard and you run, you have to run through like Long Beach or like Compton and they're like, yo, motherfucker, boom, boom, they're shooting at you and you're like, ah, ah, and you're like, ah. and you can quickly like, it's like, do a line of coke, snort some coke and you just like, ah, you run faster and shit and the cops are chasing you, it'd be <laughs> sick. Dude, I, I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to put like super, super realism into games. So like they do it in, Battlefield, for instance, so like the latest Battlefield 2042, you could make custom servers with different settings and people would make full mil sim, they call it. So military simulators. So no hit markers. No or... mini map. No. Yeah. Yeah. No survival crosshairs. mode. Yeah. It's just pure graphics as if you're there for Let real. Let me guess. Does everyone do, does everyone snipe in that game? No, no, surprisingly not. So the only, well, if you you and I just went into a random Milsim server, it'd probably be chaos and everything would just turn to shit. But the ones where there's a lot of pro gamers in it, it's really cool to watch on YouTube because they literally do it properly. Like they move up their front line. They're like check your corners. Yeah, like they they clear it. They clear like a ledge of a of a hill, and they're like, all right, get the jeeps. We're moving up, and then like to the next cover Fuck, point. Yeah. So it's like proper and. By super realism, I mean, like, you get shot in the arm, you can no longer use that arm. You get shot in the chest, you you die. Yeah. It's not like, oh, d- 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 oh I've cut five bullets. I just got to hide behind here while my health recovers mm. in 30 seconds, and then I can run back out. So I was like, what if you made it super realistic? The problem is, everyone wants that fast-paced gaming, get shot, eh, brr, brr, respawn, boom, boom, boom. So you'd have to get some... A bunch yeah. of a bunch of people that want to play and be like super dedicated to staying alive in yeah. this server. So imagine if yeah. you said everyone gets one spawn, everyone would be so careful. Like you would just sneak around, you'd sneak around, and then you find someone, and you'd be like, "I got this guy." Yeah, you'd be like, "I got someone at two o one." Exactly. East. You'd be communicating. You'd be like, "I got someone here." I think they're in the top of that building. They're hiding out. And then you'd flank them and then you'd take out this squad and you'd be like, we've just taken out a squad. But then because everything's quiet, you would hear that shit going on. So if you're in another part of the map, you just hear some gunfire. Wait for the fucking survivors from that battle to come over the hill and then pop them. Bro, when I used to play online with Jeff and shit back in high school, um, we would try to stay in a squad and work together, especially playing Battlefield and COD. But 
if they were covering one side of the map and I was covering the other, like if we were just in like a, a hotel or something, like or in a building, we all had a window to look out of and someone was covering the stairs and they were getting all the kills on their side and I was getting like no kills, I'd get frustrated and leave the squad. Uh-huh. Like I'd run downstairs and try to get into the battlefield and that left a window for them to be killed. Exactly. So there, there's always like, you know, it's hard. You're chasing the action. Yeah. You have to be like dedicated to the cause. I like that. I like that idea. I like, I like, I like the idea of, I was always like, especially for battlefield, I was like, let's play properly. Let's call out military tactics. Let's hold our and position. It works so much Check better. our corners. Yeah. Even if you're just half doing it. Mm. If you're still just running around like maniacs, but you just try to stick together, it just works so much better. It's so much fun, yeah. <laughs> um, two things. One, Far Cry, uh, Far Cry, Fallout, if a grenade goes off next to you and you don't die, but it's close enough to damage you, you like it'll damage your leg and you limp. Like you oh, drag yourself. Sick. Like it's like that. Like you can't, yeah. Do fuck, Far Cry is like, sorry, Fallout, fuck Far Cry. Um, the other I thing. Far Cry. Yeah, Far Cry was dope. The Far other Cry thing was known for its giant open map back in the yeah, day. Yeah, I've played every Far Cry except the newest one set in like Guatemala or something. I don't know. Far Cry's great, but like all it is is a new map. It's the same same style of gameplay. So do you know what I always really wished I played? Mm. I still could, but I, th- I think Halo. It, I think <laughs> it might be console only. Nah, um, Assassin's them. Creed because of the parkour. Yeah, I played. Nothing else has cool parkour. Like, you can climb shit. Like, yeah. in, in GTA, I'm like, come on, man. If I was this guy, I could climb this this um crane mm. easily. Mm. Why can't I do it? I, d- I didn't enjoy it. I, I remember I tried playing. Well, that's probably why I never played it, because it wasn't my jam. But I, I, think I just like the those... parkour part. Yeah, yeah, agreed. I think that's why I wanted to play it. I think one of the, it's one of those things where, um, well, for me, I tried playing... I tried playing Assassin's Creed from the fourth game. A friend of mine had played all of them. He's like, oh, yes, the new one's out. And I was like, all right, I'll check it out. And then I played the fourth one. It was like a pirate one or something. Black, Black Sails kind of one. And I was like, oh, this is all right. But he's like, you got to play it from the start. And he he gave me all of me. He gave me like one, two, and three on 360 or something like that. I was like, all right. And because the first one was like 2005 or something, it was so old. It just, I couldn't play it. Like it was so clunky. Yeah. So then I just lost interest. But I wanted to say... When um, you try and play old games, it just sucks. Mm, like, what is this? My thing is what I'd be interested in knowing, and I'd love like a Huberman or a specialist here, like a neuroscientist or someone who studies cognitive function. Because everyone's um, attention spans are so limited these days, I wonder if we can reprogram our brains to to be able to be more patient again. So if we took 50 people let's say people from the age of 30 to 15, 15 to 30, a group of 50 in between. And then we, we measured everyone's attention span from like TikTok videos, video games, movies with long, slow moments like Dune. I remember I watched the first Dune and it had a lot of long, quiet moments, but they were really perfect. Mm. Like Denis Villeneuve knew what he was doing. And I remember speaking to some people who were like 10 years older than me. This is in the Northern Territory. And they were like, it was good, but I had a lot of boring long moments that didn't need to be in it. And I was like, you pathetic peasant who doesn't know film. <laughs> like you grew up watching all the great, all the great. They were nerds too. And I'm thinking to myself, like you were up watching Blade Runner and shit and Star Wars. I had a lot of quiet, <laughs> long moments and you're complaining. Like what's happened to you? Like, don't ever talk to me about cinema again, you fucking peasant. That's how aggressive I am about it. So I wonder if we can, for three months, people just have to watch slower things. Like we'd, they, we'd obviously have to measure other things like sugar intake and screen time before bed, things like that. We, If we could get all that sorted, but actually just put them in activities that were slower. So like cricket games are slower, uh, movies that were slower, games like chess that are a bit slower. Um, maybe even give them games that are shooting games, but require them to be, like you said, be more tactical. Mm. And then, and then we have them sit in a room with other people of the same age group who didn't do the test and then measure their brainwaves and heart rate and see, you know, cause I wonder if you're, if you're bored 
and you're anxious to leave and move and get away from whatever it is you're doing, I wonder if the heart rate is accelerated or there's a spike in brain activity. If there is, I'd love to measure the before and after and see, mm. see if we can actually reprogram people to be more patient again, you know? Uh, my opinion is we probably 100% could. Yeah. If you just took, if you just turned off the internet, for instance. If we just took people's phones away for a year, dude, can you imagine, imagine how if, interesting yeah. civilization would be? We'd all be like, huh, I think I'm going to, you know, uh, just a side note real quick. I miss walking bare feet in public. Really? Like some days when I'm walking home, I just want to take my, like I used to do it when I was working in mascot recently and my last job. I'd take my shoes off. I'm still wearing like a business suit, like business attire. I'd take my shoes off and walk home 40 minutes. I'd never step on glass or anything. My feet weren't like damaged, but like it was just so nice walking on concrete and grass and a bit of sand from the parks. Sand. Yeah. And like the other day I was walking, I was walking on the pavement from the gym and I remember just walking in like my comfortable shoes underneath my feet and I was just thinking like, this feels so artificial. Like you never notice it, but it's so artificial. Oh, like big time. I want to feel the contours of the ground of that, the crack in the, in the cement and the, the bit of bark that's been brushed over from the trees. I want to feel that. I, I want it to sting my do feet. Do your calves hurt after you walk barefoot? Mm, no. Because I don't do, I don't, I'm not that extreme, but I, I bought some barefoot shoes and I'll do like longer walks. Like if I go on a hike. I would wear these barefoot shoes and it's crazy, man. My calves would be sore. The bottom of my feet would be sore because my, it's my all heels, just cushioned my... by your shoes normally. Yeah. 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 And you're it's not like... actually using those muscles properly. Yeah. It feels like it's like a bone touching the bone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I think, um, the, the sole of my heel very much. So, mm. um, not so much the, the, the toes or anything like that, but yeah. Or most, I think I've only done four, actually four or five park runs, 5k run. I think for all of them, I've worn my barefoot shoes. So then I you have to toe strike when you're jogging. Mm. You can't heel strike. Yeah, no, that's how you run. Yeah. Like people run flat footed. So, so then my do that. calves are very sore the next day. Excellent. A little 5K run. I'm like, damn. You would not otherwise use your calves. Yeah. But wait, back to, <laughs> back to gaming. Can I just, I want you to keep that topic and we'll discuss that, but. For the next five minutes, I want to see if I can have this conversation with you as an NPC. <laughs> can I try it? <laughs> All right. Well, you're just going to have programmed lines though, right? Exactly. All right, go for it. <clears throat> about gaming or? Just whatever you're about to say. Well, I was going to say, I was going to ask you, which is a problem because now you're an NPC, is um, what would be your ideal game? Not what you would make, but what would be your ideal game? that you would want to play? <laughs> Basketball! <laughs> I think a first-person shooter game would be good. I like shooting people. I like being able to reload and see through my gun. It seems very personal. I think games where you're looking behind your main characters seems a bit impersonal. Like Grand Theft Auto. Well, you know what I cheers mean? to that. Cheers. Wow, that's like, that's some 2010 NPC right there. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. You be an NPC as well. And we just, <laughs> we'll, we'll just try to have an NPC. Co NPC conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, uh, no, but do you know? First person all the way though. First person. First so, person shooter games. I'd say... Um, so I'm talking like my ideal, mm. this is what I would want. I know it's not going to be all of this, but imagine GTA six comes out mm -hmm. and it's just the physics and destruction, except for a lot better because unreal engine five or like rockstar's version of their latest thing. It's got to be made by rockstar. Agreed with the being able to destroy anything, enter any building, swim in the ocean, fatigue, I don't like games where you have to drink and eat because, like, they become nah, tedious. Fuck that. Yeah. But if you have the option to, 
Like, dude, Duke Nukem on a Nintendo 64, you could go over and piss into a urinal and press the button. And when he'd piss, he'd go, and like he could smoke cigars and shit. So like games where like, if you were to sit there, like GTA, if you drink enough beer, it gets woozy and you can throw up. But uh, like having that in first person and actually like, if you keep drinking after a while, like the hand gets shaking, you can actually miss and tip it all over yourself. And he's just like throws up and like an NPC will come over and talk to you and you're just like, ah, and you can throw up on them, you know? So I would love the destruction and physics of like a battlefield, mm-hmm. but then the detail of a Red Dead Redemption. So like detail in everything, like a the detail of a, of a Star Wars battlefront, dude, Star Wars battlefronts have the most crispest, Really? Crispest graphics ever. Dude, crispest. You ever played Red Dead Redemption 2, though? I've I've watched a zillion videos of Red Dead on YouTube, dude. The graphics are shit. amazing. People take screenshots out of that shit, and people think it's real landscape screenshots. Yeah. I mean, photographs. Fair, fair, fair. That shit's crazy. Yeah. So maybe that kind of detail in the environment, the physics where you can destroy things. Yeah. And then... There was another one I was going to put in the mix. I can't remember now. You're like, like full frontal nudity and sex. <laughs> uh, being able to blow people's limbs off. Yeah. <laughs> That's Henry, also a Red, Red Dead Redemption. Henry Cavill recently, is he's a big advocate for like not liking sex scenes in movies. He's like, you don't need to show someone having full full on sex to prove any kind of like you can just have them kissing and then closing the light or the door the and, old school way yeah and i agree like dude like panning panning to the curtains yeah when i see even if it was like a margot robbie like the most gorgeous woman in the world if i saw a sex scene with her even if her titties were showing and like he was like going down between her legs or she was going down on him like i'm just like i don't need to see a hollywood ex S sex scene like I don't care about sex scenes dude skip that shit yeah, but- like like Homer and Marge Simpson have Bart Lisa and Maggie I don't need to imagine those guys having sex like I know that that's they- a weird cartoon I'm just saying like <laughs> it's not it's not I don't think you should do a sex scene just to put a sex scene in a movie but I think like the ones that are a build legit, up of passion yeah that that are legit are because it's like part of the storyline like for instance. Uh, Gyllenhaal and Anne Hathaway, what is it, Sex, Love, and Other Drugs, where she's got Parkinson's? Bits of it, yeah. Yeah, so that, like, they don't have, like, passionate or, like, revealing sex scenes just for the sake of having a sex scene. It's just to show, like, they're that's, they're getting it on. That's not lost on me. Like, I, 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 like, if you watch 300 or something, it's like, it's like a minute or two of like them doing different positions and shit. Yeah, that's weird. Like if that, you if you just necessary? had if you just had them lying down kissing, and then maybe they he rolls her over and she giggles and then they keep kissing and then it goes to black. I'll know that they had sex. Yeah, because like we can all agree that Hollywood sex is like. Uh, <laughs> but in real life, it would be Gyllenhaal pulling Anne Hathaway's hair in a ponytail and she's like, ah, that's and he's point. just like, ah, that's, ah, the, that's the point. That's kind of what the sex scenes do in they that fuck, movie are. Do they fuck like that? Not exactly like that, but they like walk into the room and they basically still got their clothes on and he's like ripping down her pants and stuff. Like it's, That's fine. It's, it's to Leave display it. like they're just doing it there and then. Here's know. the thing. Here's the thing. If there's a movie where... My favorite type of romances and movies are where the two people don't like each other to begin with, and then they they learn that they actually like each other, and it's in a moment where you got to watch this film. Yeah, and it's not. Yeah, but like, you could tell it's that's more straightforward. You know, those two are going to fall for each other, kind of thing. Oh, it's like right. it's like you know they're the two main. You want it to like, take you by surprise. I like I like the one where like um. For example, this is this is not the best example, but like maybe a soldier's like fighting in a foreign country and then um like he fucking he rescues a woman and she hates him because he's actually the one oppressing her country and he's like, Oh, I'm here to help and she's like, No, you didn't do that and he's like, Whatever and then you're probably expecting, okay, she's in the scene, she's still in the show that so they're gonna fall in love with each other. That's obvious. But um if like later on maybe she gets a gun 
and starts fighting his men. And then they have a standoff at some point in the movie and they wrestle with each other and then a bomb goes off and then he saves her or something or she saves him. And then like they're trapped in a basement above a building that's fallen down. And then they have the, they talk it out with each other and then they, they fuck or something, you know, it's just like they're in that thing. Then that's kind of like, Oh shit. Oh fuck. Okay. Oh, all right. And then like, they can do the they can do the quick clothes ripping off because that displays the immediacy of how badly they want it. They're in a crazy environment. They don't know what's going to happen yeah. next. And then they start kissing and rubbing on each other. You can cut it there. I know they're going to have crazy sex. If they slowly take off their clothes and they slowly start kissing each other and then they cut from there and then it cuts back to them and they're putting their clothes back on, I'll know they had passionate sex. Yeah. I don't need to see a minute. What about like, what about like Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Because you don't, it's it's still a sex scene, mm. but you don't see much or anything. What I'm saying is... But that is a display of like... Passionate, aggressive sex. It, yeah. aggre- they, they, here, here's the it's thing. It's meant to be funny because they're like breaking their house even more after they shot it up yeah. by having here's, sex in Here's it. the thing. In regards to a comedy like that or like some of the Dane Cook movies, I think it's tasteful to have them like, if it's like they're having sex and they're like knocking over furniture and things and like that shows them in the kitchen then it shows them in the bathroom and it shows them in the pool. That's comedic. That's funny. Yeah, it's necessary. It's got a funny spin to it. But if it's like a slow... Yeah, I get what you mean. Uh, you mean uh, the... It's just you mean like, the, uh, I'm uncomfortable. Uh, 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 yeah, those, like, those sex scenes. They're the ones that are redundant, but... Yeah. The sex so that's, scenes that's my like, opinion. I'm with Henry Cavill on that. Yeah. yeah the sex scenes like in uh, Friends with Benefits, it's necessary because it's part of the storyline. Yes. They're I, friends I, and I can't they're like, hey, let's that. have sex. I can't and you have that. to know that. You have to know the kooky things because it's shit that us as a viewer will relate to, right? Mm. You're like, I know, oh, yeah, that's funny because, like, you don't know where my clit is. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. I know there's a lot of. It's really, it's really relatable for like couples as well, like Married at Forty and all those other kind of movies. It's like this is forty, whatever. Where it's like they're half, they're like halfway through sex, and she's like, oh, "You put it in the wrong hole," and he's like, "I'm sorry." Oh, there it is. And then like he's like thrusting on her, and she's like, "Here's, here's what I'm saying. If it's a rom com, or if it's a comedy, the sex scenes are okay with me. Yeah. If it's a drama, or if it's an action, sex scenes aren't necessary." That's where I'm drawing the line. Really? Yeah. Nah, I think that's a much more gray area for me. Like, if it's if it's a good part of the storyline, then fucking whack it in there. Fair enough. If it's not necessary and you're just doing it because you want a sex scene in your movie, fuck you. Mm. Yeah. That was aggressive. Don't care Maybe about not. that stuff, hey. I really don't. Do you know what I do, I do want to start seeing in movies, though? And this is probably... This is probably me completely contradicting everything because this is even worse than a sex scene. I want to see people taking shits and pisses. <laughs> That's I, a thing. I want to, yeah, like you, you, you'll probably, one in every 50 movies, you'll see a person take a piss or something, right? They're like drunk or whatever. And like, I pulled up on the sidewalk, but like, here's the There's thing. There's no need to show someone taking a normal piss. That's why. Yeah. Unless it's like in a pub and it's a toilet yeah, scene. Like- but- but the thing is, like, especially in the in like a maybe a post apocalyptic movie or even like a war movie where a guy's like fighting in Afghanistan, even then they'll show it because it's part of the day and day. Like Jarhead, it's like hydrate, train, weapons training, um, military duty, like guard duty, take a shit, jerk off. Those are they show it yeah. because it's like, but like, dude, I just want to see one movie where the 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 Bruce Willis or the fucking um. Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, imagine, um, for example, Die Hard, the first Die Hard. I feel like there's heaps. Hang on, hang on, I feel like there's heaps. I feel like what you're about to describe. I want to break it up, though. So imagine imagine this. You've never seen this, okay? I I bet you. You've seen Die Hard, right? You know Die Hard, the first one, Nakatomi (laughs) Center and shit. Bruce Willis is like, you know, crawling through the vents. Um, coming down to LA, da, 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 and he's got the lighter, and then he's like walks on the glass. He's got bare foot, and he's hurting himself, and he's like, "All right, assholes, I'm coming for you." Imagine a scene right after where he's threatened one of the one of the the, the killers. I'm on level six, motherfucker, and then he's actually on level seven or something. He clicks off and goes, "Oh fuck, oh man." Camera's following me. Runs to the toilet. Ah, ah. He's got the runs because he's in a serious ah, ah. 
listens to the radio, fuck, quickly wipes his ass, washes his hands and goes, <laughs> you never see that. But because that, it's unnecessary. It's like, unnecessary, but it's so real. Nobody's going to do it because it's unnecessary. But if they really so wanted to- So is the sex to, scene. If they really wanted to, but you would, I guarantee you movies use it if if it's used for a purpose. If it's used for a purpose to like display the really stressful situation or he's having to eat really bad food so now he's got the runs, then it'll be in the movie. Guaranteed. Yeah, but look, I know what you're saying. Guaranteed. I know. When, I do, know. when do you see people pissing in a movie? If it's pivotal to the storyline. He's doing a normal thing. He's in the battlefield. He's like, all right, I gotta take a leak, guys. Yeah, or he's something's he's, about to happen. He's you at know the it's bar. Something. He's at the bar. Yeah, you know something's about to I, happen yeah. because it's part of him going for a piss. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I know, happens, I know, I know, I know, I know. You don't have to explain this shit, bro. I'm the movie man. All right, I know, <laughs> I know what you're saying, but just for once, let's make a movie. Where just we for put once, unnecessary piss scenes in, so that we throw people off where they're like, oh, something's about to happen. He's going for a leak around the back. Something's gonna happen. And then he just walks back in and nothing happened. Yeah. He, all he did was take a leak. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah. Or That wasn't part of the storyline. I'd like to make a movie. I'd like to make a movie where right at the start, the main character takes his shit and he doesn't wash his hands. And through the whole film, he's doing things that require him to touch things that are very, very important. Like white linen, he's cooking dinner. And for the whole 90 minutes, I just want people to sit there and be extremely uncomfortable <laughs> because he hasn't washed his hands. Like he took a really slimy stinker, dude. And he's like, he's he's like cleaning his teeth while he's taking a shit. Just like really gross. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, doesn't wash his hands. And then for the rest Picks of the film. Picks his nose and shit. Like gross. For the rest of the film, he just, that's brilliant. Because I'm, I'm OCD with some things. Like if I watch a film and like, I've seen some films where the guy would take a shit and then he's like, oh, fuck, a dinosaur's coming. He he doesn't wipe his ass. And the whole film, I'm like, bro, he's wipe your ass. shit on his ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump in the lake if you don't have toilet paper. Like, I am I'm I can't. Or like a movie, a TV show or a movie. All you're thinking of is that shit between his yeah, butt cheeks. Yeah, yeah. I think about this shit. Or, <laughs> or they're watching, they're at the dinner table and there's like a fucking spread or an or like breakfast and there's an orange juice and pancakes and they're like, take one bite of the toast or the pancake and go, oh, bus is here, gotta go. And then the mum kisses on them and they leave. It's like, your mum just took an hour and a half to make pancakes and pour you a fresh cup of juice. <laughs> and then you go, you fucking sit there and you eat the pancakes. Yeah, that whole piece of toast is still there. Yeah, fucking. And then the mum's like, bye. I'd be, my mum would be like, get your fucking ass back here. You eat this, you know, or take it to school and eat it. Yeah. I would, ah. Uh, Everyone can agree with me. You eat the fucking food. I don't care if you ate food at the crafts table before you started filming. Dude, the guy who plays Kramer in Seinfeld, if you watch all the bloops, uh, Seinfeld bloopers, he's actually eating the food and they'll, they'll, they'll keep laughing in a blooper and then, and then the Michael, I can't remember his name, Michael Richards or something. He's like, guys, I'm eating this over here. I'm, I'm, I can't keep eating this. We got to get this scene. Like it's yeah, true, you know? Yeah. Or like the smoking scenes when people aren't smokers and they're smokers in the movie. They got fake ciggies though. They do, but, but you're still I, inhaling I, shit. Yeah, the, the herbal, the herbal ones. They were just like Ariane, yeah. or, oregano and shit. But I smoked a couple of those when I was on set for um, Danger Close. Oh, they were nice. handing them out doing like, cigarettes taste like shit. These weren't, these weren't any they were their own kind of shit taste. Uh, like you wouldn't, you wouldn't choose one over the other. Both are disgusting flavor, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah, but it's just not tobacco, so it's like safer. Not tobacco. Yeah, not, exactly. Not tobacco. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited for GTA NPCs to have cool. like proper lives and backstories. Same dude. Do you know um, you you saw Fight Club? Hey. Yeah. Do you know Helena Bonham Carter? With Helena Bonham Carter, she was um, Bellatrix the Strange, La Strange. Oh, she's like the main chick in it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She actually got. Uh, what no, about those sex scenes? Necessary for the storyline. They, I think, if sex scenes without sh those sex scenes, when you find shit out, you'd be like, oh my god, the whole time he was fucking her, and then he was coming down. Yeah, that's, and then he that's was necessary. another character. That's necessary, but those sex scenes didn't really. They weren't. 
I think what I don't like about the sex scenes, it's it's prying into another person's personal life. Like, hey, hang on, just hear me out. When you're watching a rom-com or a comedy sex scene, it's prying, but you know that sex scene is related to more dialogue coming down the track mm. or they've spoke about sex and then they had sex. So you know all the dialogue before the sex scene, they're making comparisons about the sex and they're going to talk about their girlfriends and things like that. So that the sex is pivotal, like you said. If it's a scene where, like in 300 before Leonidas goes to war and he fucks his missus, it's just slow mm, thrusting and ah. And it's just like, I don't need to see this. I know she loves her. Show the kissing, show the caressing of her skin. I don't need to see this. I don't, I don't, I don't give a fuck what you have to say. I don't need to see it. But if it's a scene, <laughs> if it's a scene like Fight Club where it's like the music's like, gig, 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 gig. Gig, 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 and they're in that dirty fucking abandoned house and they're like fucking in the bed. That's not so personal. Uh, uh, that's just like, you know, they're living, they're living in, in chaos. It's this chaos, chaotic, grimy thing and the sex that they have. But in the uh, uh one, they want you to see that because they want you to see this is how passionately they make love. And you can now show that through kissing. War. You can show that through kissing and other things, bro. I don't need to see them uh erring, you know? Anyways, um, Helena Bonham Carter was smoking actual cigarettes for that movie and mm. she got pneumonia Oh, from smoking the cigarettes. <laughs> she- <coughs> Imagine filming a scene, like cigarettes is one thing and it's the exact same problem, but imagine like smoking a cigar in a scene and... <laughs> And then you're going to do another take, <laughs> like, 15 minutes later, the cigar's going to be burnt down, like, way more. That's you're another like, thing. Right, That's crazy, Another bro. cigar. Yeah. Like, the, like in the James Bond films, when they got to flip a Ferrari, it's like, all right, we got the second Ferrari, that shot sucked. Or the suits, or the fucking... Exp- the flip cars are uh, <clears throat> replicas, though, right? They're yeah, 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 yeah. But still, Ferrari. that would have cost serious yeah. money. Big time. And, like... um. And think about like if they're doing it in like a place in Portugal or Italy, it's like if they fuck up this road, this could be like a this could be like a expensive road. Big bill. Yeah, no, it could be a um heritage listed road, dude. Like they want to get a nice area. Like if they're filming on a beach and shit. Same with this movie. Yeah. I think they had about I think I can't remember the number, but I think it was like there was at least five DeLoreans, mm. like all set up the same for the Back to the Future films. Yeah, they had a ton of DeLoreans where they would be like, all right, this guy's going to be doing this. This guy's going to be doing this. Yeah. They're set up all differently for different scenes. Cigars and things. Like, cigars aren't ex- expensive, but if you have to punch a fucking ton of them, or if you had to get a specialist to come in and make a cigar look like a Cuban, certain coloration in the sticker, that would still cost money. Mm. You know? Yeah, it was still significantly cheaper because you could just get a cigar and then get someone to wrap it in a new leaf with a different coloring and yeah, put that it. takes. When I did, um, when they did that music festival, but also have you seen movie budgets? Oh, they're crazy. Like movie, wait, they'll probably just get a fucking box of Cubans. Yeah, box of Cubans from actual Cuba yeah, aren't, yeah, yeah. aren't expensive. Yeah, you're it's right. only because we live in Australia. True, and the America puts an embargo on them and stuff. Oi. One thing I've never thought about and I've never bothered to look up, but you, you make a good point about the budget. Let's say a movie's budget is 50 million. It's like, an, it's like a big fucking... Um, Blockbuster. Yeah. I used to think if that 50 million, does that pay for the entire movie and the actors? And then I thought some actors get paid like 20 million or 60 million for a film. So it couldn't be. So they must have a movie budget and then actors got to get paid on the side. So, so that's what I want to know is like, I think, where does the extra money come from for well, the actors? No, I think, uh, and I could be completely wrong here, but I think some actors have contracts that are like linked to the success of the film. Right. I remember Matt Damon saying that yeah. like, like, um, yeah. Like you're going to get paid if the film is successful. Does well. Yeah. And sometimes You'll they have to commission. front they got to front their own money as well, yeah. Well, that what's uh, that's what happened in um Forrest Gump. Tom Hanks did that. Tom Hanks and one of the other directors who wasn't 
I can't remember, but it, it's in like, have you seen the series of movies that made us? On Netflix? Yeah. No. It's great, I, dude. You've got to watch it. I've seen, I, I know of it and I know what the premise, but I haven't watched it. You need to watch it because it's literally like iconic films like that and like how they were made and how they were almost not made and all the issues they ran into. Oh. These are like specific movies where there was a ton of like weird shit. Like it almost didn't happen. And like the last scene, Forrest Gump, I think that was the one. Forrest Gump is where they used a lot of like popular music as a soundtrack, which cost a fuck ton of money to buy those oh, rights. yeah, copyright and trade and all that shit. So they were like, no, nah, no, nah, we got to use it. We got to use it. And the directors were like, no, we can't afford it. It's not in the budget. And then they like used it anyway for like the rough cut. And then when they played it, the directors were like, fuck, the music's too good. Like we can't change it now. <laughs> and then same thing with the scenes where he's running and he's running all across America. Shit happens, yeah. So he, um, they wanted the scenes of him running in all these different places, but they, it wasn't in the budget to fly him all over the place. So I think, if I'm getting this right, I think him and one of the like producers decided to just pay themselves to go and fly to these things and film it. By the time like the director found out, he's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? They're like, we had to get the shots. Yeah. And then it was like some of the best shit. And yeah. They're like, yeah, this made it. Fuck yeah. You gotta watch it. It's like there's Home Alone. There's Back I didn't, to the Future. I Did you thought, know that Back to the Future, they filmed like a quarter of, uh, not a quarter. They filmed a ton of scenes, like weeks worth of filming, with a different actor for Marty. It wasn't Michael J. Fox. They had a completely different actor. They so got much the money, part. Dude. They got the part for Marty, and they weren't. 100% sold on it. They wanted Michael J. Fox, but he was filming his TV series. And they were like, come on, man. And then eventually he was like, fuck it, I'll do it. And most of the time he would film for the TV series, go over to the set for the movie at night, film Back to the Future at night, and was like wrecked. It's all, they're all night shots, aren't they? And he was wrecked, right? And then when they first screened it, like the first opening screening, apparently they like, the the his agent called him and he was like oh great and he's gonna say it sucked because I was so wrecked and stuff and he was like everyone loves it he's like oh my god I wonder if that played on his Parkinson's like just being exhausted that young potentially because the guy from the Co uh, what's his name the guy from NCIS um he was also Goma Pile in Full Metal Jacket I am in a world of shit that actor I think he did like. Just consistently filming NCIS or, or, or those, you know, that dum dum, mm. that show in New York. I think he filmed like, it's just like 72 hour days, like just Damn. constantly filming. And then That's he's not possible. Uh, like crazy, crazy, like not nonstop, just like <laughs> getting one hour sleep every fucking, every, every day, mm. kind of like crazy shit. And now he's got like Parkinson's or dementia as well because he was just yeah. knackered. But, um, dude, I thought that Movies That Made Us was just, like, pop culture's going, oh, my God, I, yeah, I loved Back to the Future, and I remember when da 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 and nah, they talked about really it. really cool. I didn't realize it was actually, like, the... I'm going to watch and it. interviewing, sure. like, the producers and people that worked on the film, it's really good. Tight. You will love it. That's tight. It, it's sick tight, almost. Sick tight. Bobo! Billy! Billy, don't you lose my number! Cause you're not anywhere That I can find you You haven't noticed it yet What? I did it ages ago I think I did it before we started filming You still haven't noticed You got so close to noticing What? We've been talking about it for this whole time Billy Billy don't you lose my name. Why don't you gaze towards Marty and the Doc for a moment Marty and Doc What about them? Look at them <laughs> Notice anything? Oh, they've switched heads. <laughs> they've switched hair. The hair's just the hair. Okay, just the hair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see it. I see. Did oh, you yeah. see me hold it to the camera? Yeah, but it wasn't focusing, so I was like, oh, 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 what's "Change it. Doing? No, change it back. Change it back. Change it back, please." It's that OCD I have of like the guy who doesn't Wait, wash his I gotta, hands. I gotta put this in front of your face so that it focuses on it. It's not even gonna focus on it. Unbelievable. Anyway, Joel switched the heads of my Lego Marty and. Doc. 
You s- Marty. Some people say le- Lego. Do you say Lego or Lego? Lego. How do they say it in German? Lego. Lego. Yeah. Billy. Marty. We gotta get. Oh, I gotta go back to the future, Marty. <laughs> Holy fuck! That was a good impression. What? Where we're going, we don't need roads. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Holy fuck, dude! Why am I Back to the Future impersonation so good? <laughs> I've never done Doc before, <laughs> Marty. Back in the 1978. Holy shit! I'm good. <laughs> I've never done this before. You hear yourself in the headphones too? <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. How could we? Oh, that was good, right? That was great. Ah, cheese, Doc. I need to work on my Marty, but now nah, that sounds like Morty, not Marty. Yeah, um. Ah, fuck. No, shit. <laughs> Nobody calls me mad, dog. Especially not some dude it up egg sucking gutter trash. Hell yeah. Mad dog tenant. How, what, does, what was how the na- does Marty talk? What was the name of um ah. No, he was like, nah, he's like Ah shit. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Man. yeah. What was the name of the um the sports book that Biff got? The Almanac. Almanac. What is he say? He's like how do you know about that? Some old weasel guy gave it to me. The almanac. Sounds something like that. Yeah, yeah. Let me hear your doc impersonation. No. <laughs> Give it to me. It's not going to happen. Let's hear it. Do it's it. It's not going to Give it to me. It's not going to happen. I'm not looking at you. Give it to me. It's not going to happen. You got Marty! Do the... <laughs> oh! He, Marty! He comes from here! And he's a... a he's a bit rough. Marty! Oh! You know what I like when they do German translations of films? <laughs> they have to translate <laughs> things like when he says, um, I can't find you. Yeah. Marty goes back to 1955 and he's like, oh my God, that's heavy. And then jo- Doc makes the reference. He's like, heavy, there's that word again. Like, is there something wrong with the gravitational pull in the future? Because he keeps calling everything heavy, but it's just an expression in the it's, 80s. It's a star, bam, bam, yeah. So, like, they got to translate that, and it, they do it differently. So, like, in the movie, it's got to sound like something that you would really say in, in, in the German, German language. Really? So he doesn't say But heavy. they're not German characters, though. But he doesn't say heavy, because it wouldn't make any sense. Like, they're like, why? Oh, Germans we? would really not get it? Yeah, so in Germany, they, he says, um, stark, which is strong. And then he makes a reference of like, is there something wrong with the electrical current or something? Because it's, So he changes the whole... The whole joke is changed. They have to because imagine if they translated a German movie into English and they're like, oh, strong. You'd be like, why the fuck is he saying strong? That's not a real expression. Well, here's the thing, right? Heavy was only used by some of the youth in America at the time. So even the older dude didn't know it. So it's all pop culture. So I don't see why they couldn't have said heavy and then Germans would have started walking around and be like, yeah, Hans, that's pretty heavy, bro. No, because bro. it's said in the past. Yeah. Or but, in the current. Like you, but, can't, but, you can't just make something up and pretend it's got pop culture if you want it to be relatable. Yeah, I know. But still, like, like Marty is using a word that Doc doesn't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the viewer knows it. So the viewer's like, oh, well, yeah. I'm sure. Because it sounds like a real expression. Like if you say to me, uh, you are in the past right now, and it's like unbelievable, you'd be like, oh, shit, that's heavy. Like mm. that's that's some heavy shit. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is like. That's real. You can't just say, oh, strong. You'd I, be like, I doubt, strong? I doubt people in Britain and Australia and Canada, maybe not Canada, but most English countries weren't necessarily saying heavy. Only the Americans would have been saying heavy. They didn't have to change that shit for us. So why did they but have to change it? But it makes sense for, the... for us. Yeah, but like for the English language. Yeah, but why couldn't the Germans just figure that shit out on their own? They're this, they're fucking intelligent like people. Like I said, what would you think if he said strong? Yeah, well, wait. So you're saying you're saying Germans don't really use the word heavy to begin with to explain, explain the situation. It. Yeah, yeah, I know, but they but they use the word heavy because to if explain. you say heavy schwer, that means difficult in German. See, you could have started off with that. Yeah, I only have... just made that connection just now in fuck. my head. Yeah. <laughs> you fuck! <laughs> so, right, so, yeah, yeah. So if something's heavy in Germany, it's difficult. Right. It's a completely different um, interpretation of, mm. of a word that we use, right? Okay, you could have just, it's fine. Moving on. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine, that's fine. Like, um, yeah, so, do you, 
the fir- here's a cool question. The first time you ever watched Back to the Future was that in Deutsch? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, I used to all watch, three of them. I was very little still, and I used to watch. My favorite was just the ending of the third one, the Western scenes. But the train rocks up. The yeah, the train scene. I would play that with my Duplo train falling off the couch at the end, and the um, and toys, the standoff. Bro. Yeah, toys were so sick when we had that so kind of like. Sick. But they were so sick because of our childhood imagination. Yeah. Now we see them. And I, I always, that's probably why I um, nostalgically love Lego because I'm like, oh man, man, remember when I used to just be like, I could just like play with it for hours and just be like, yeah, and you could imagine it doing shit. Yeah. I had Whereas this... now I'm like, oh yeah, I would like to set up this scene. Maybe I'll open this door and stage a crash. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I agreed. I remember... I did have some epic battles with my toys. I mainly had like G.I. Joe's and then other sick toys like Dragon Ball Z toys and other things. But um, I used to have this one G.I. Joe that I really liked. His name was Fox. The actual character's name was Fox. I used to get a new one every every time. Like if that one's leg fell off, my parents would always just somehow buy me a new version of it. Replace the Fox. And he was literally like a, a – he was pretty much a Nazi. Like he looked like Rommel. This is probably where my love of, of the German uniform came from. He had the mm. big black boots. He had the flared pants. You know how the Germans are the flared pants. Mm. He had the the cover, colored cough, uh, um, cuff uniform and he had a fucking – German officer hat. He looked like a German soldier, and there was mm. like a snow version, a desert version, and I used to just call him Fox. He, and he had like an eye patch. He was sick. He just looked like Rommel. And um, I remember I used to have this record player that, like, sorry, like a like an old stereo that worked. We had we always had stereos in my house, and my family loves music. And oh, yeah, one of the mine. one of the record buttons was like broken out, and it was just this right size of one of the GI Joe's heads. So I remember I used to start off the battle going. All right, Fox is the strongest, right? He could fuck anyone up. So um, I'm going to have this guy throw a grenade and Fox is going to run at the enemies. It would be like 10 versus 10. He'll get blown away and his head will land through this thing and he'll be knocked out. So all the weaker soldiers will fight. And then right at the end, Fox pulls his head out, wakes up, and then kicks the shit out of the winner of that team. And he just nice. fucking ice that dude, dude. And then like... Because I had so many G.I. Joes. I had like a crate full of... Do you remember G.I. Joes? Mm, no. I never I'd had G.I. So, Joes. G.I. Joes were sick. I had so many of them that like I could afford to like get scissors, run down upstairs, get scissors, chop their arms off and like... The guy would be like, ah, ah, like a chopped oh, off actually, arm and I had shit. The, like, are they like the really little ones? What about the really small ones you had? No, no, no. Nine. Nine. G.I. Joes were like about the size of your index finger a bit bigger. Oh, yeah. Okay. And they had like... The arms and heads and legs could move. They were, they were oh, sick, yeah, dude. Yeah, sick, plastic. Sick. But um, yeah, I'd cut limbs off and put tomato sauce and just do fucked up shit. Sick. Yeah. Sickening. Yeah. But epic. When I have when I have children, especially boys, hopefully, fingers crossed, and um, they have toys. Like, do you know how little girls force their dads to have picnics with them? Yeah. And they like would. Like, I'm going to force my son to battle my... I'm going to, like, get his toys and be like, defeat this giant Godzilla toy, and my kid's going to be like... I'm going to be you're like... Gonna to, you're going to have to start real young because as soon as they get into the age and they see all their other friends playing on screens, you'll be fucked. Yeah, do kids even play with toys now? I'm sure they do. They're, like, the really young ones, sure. But I don't know. There oh, might be, like, like, a little transition where they're just like, oh, this isn't as cool. I can't make it do everything I want to make it do like I can with this human on the screen. Mm. It'd be sick to have money, like enough money to take our kids on holidays. So like they they've got enough camping and adventuring and mm. living outdoor so, activities. <clears throat> so when they come home, like, do you remember mean girls? Mm. Do you remember when, um, <clears throat> what was her name? Katie. When she comes to, when she joins the high school, she just got back from Africa. So she's used to like, you know, roughnecking it. She doesn't really know fashion or the social norms of being popular. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'd love to have my children be a bit naive like her when they, like, still have friends and know how to operate tablets and know what's socially not yeah. lame, but, like, just be a bit not more... Not be addicted to it. Yeah, be like a bit more others. like, hey, Tommy, um... Hey, what are you doing this weekend? We're going to go blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, oh, no, dude, sorry, man. Like, I'm going to go fucking on a 12-hour hike with my parents. 
They're like, oh, cool, fuck, whatever. Let's like be more inclined, like give them the opportunity to be on a tablet and do all that stuff. Obviously, to a certain extent, mm. discipline, but at the same time, give, fill them with the good shit in life so they feel more inclined to do that cool shit, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn, man. Raising kids. It's hard. Mm. Like, do we even know what we're doing? No. Nah. Huh. nah. But then we're supposed to teach people. All right. Cheers to that. Cheers. I've been talking a lot this episode. Sorry. It's fine. Smothering. Forced. <laughs> Welcome M to the Van Lita. NPCs, baby. NPCs for life. Oh. Huh. Hello. Yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs>